Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got part 11 of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, on last week's show, we had just finished up with making some of the external pieces for the cab, and that's what we're going to carry on with today. I said I was going to add possibly some laser embellishments, and I couldn't resist. So let's head over to the bench and have a look at that. Well, I couldn't resist on putting some kind of embellishment on the side of the doors, and I ended up wanting to put the truck that I was building and then a little bit of a logo, maybe like a company kind of label. So that's what I ended up engraving on the side. It really adds an extra element to the build. Totally optional, guys. If you don't have a laser engraver, don't worry about it. You don't need this sort of thing to make an amazing looking model. But for me, I have the ability and I do love adding the laser embellishment. So there you go. There is the embellishment on the doors and it's on both the drivers and the passenger side. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention back again to sheet four of nine on the plans. And we're going to start making this dash as well as the seats. So let's get that started. And for the dash, we're going to need a piece that is three quarters of an inch by 13 sixteenths by three and three quarters of an inch long. And we will just cut that over at the table saw from some scrap. Well, there's a couple ways that you can go about this. You can do this the easy way or you can do this the hard way. Guys, the easiest way to do this is to glue this onto a piece of a quarter inch thick MDF or hardboard and make a template. There are a lot of measurements missing here off of this top profile. So it's very difficult to duplicate it by marking it out by hand. Things like this angle here, this angle here, this radius. What is the difference from this tip up to this three sixteenths of an inch thick piece over here? This half inch center, how far is it in from either edge? This quarter inch right here, is that equal to this? Is this three sixteenths here? Is this a quarter inch? There's a lot of dimensions that could have been added here that aren't. So using the uh, original print, photocopying and making a marking template is the way to go here. However, three quarters of an inch, by 13 sixteenths. Well, here we have three quarters of an inch. And if I line up my blank, we can see that works just fine. Three and three quarters of an inch, we can line that up side to side, and that lines up just fine as well. However, here's my 13 sixteenths of an inch side. And if I line it up with the edge here, that is kind of on the short side. So, guys, after taking some measurements and checking things out, this 13 sixteenths is actually seven eighths of an inch. So depending on the version of prints that you have, it may already say seven eighths of an inch, but if yours says 13 sixteenths, just be aware, it's actually a little larger than that. So I'm gonna recut this blank. And what we're gonna do is we're going to drill this 3 sixteenths diameter hole here first, again, it doesn't say 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter anywhere here, um, but I've referenced the steering wheel to the center hub hole, and that is 3 sixteenths. So if we want the shaft of the steering wheel to fit through this hole, we need this to be 3 sixteenths. So let's get this hole done first. We're going to head over to the drill press. Well, what I have done is I have taken our piece of stock and I have mounted it on another piece of stock that has a 45 degree bevel cut on it. The plans show a 45 degree angle on this hole, this 3 16 diameter hole. So this is going to hold our stock at the proper angle for us to drill it. Now I've measured in on from one end at seven eighths of an inch. That is the center point of our hole. But if we look here on the drawing and we extend both the baseline and the edge of our 3 16 diameter hole, we can see here that the edge lines up with our corner of our stock. So all you need to do is measure in 3 30 seconds of an inch and put a center punch here. And at that point we can drill our hole. 
Now you want to use a brad point bit here and take it slow. Let the drill bit do its job. And there you go, that is step one of our dashboard. So let's just pop this off of here and we'll pull off this double-sided tape. We're not gonna need that anymore. Now guys, on the side of our piece, I have drawn a line here, a diagonal line, just roughly to show me which way the hole goes. That way I can reference it to our plans to make sure that I've got it going the right way. And even with that mark, I still managed to drill it incorrectly. I drilled on the wrong plane. That's okay, it happens. We're gonna redo it. This is why we do the hole first. You'd hate to get all this cutting done and this rabbit right here and then find out that you messed up and your hole's in the wrong place. So this now becomes kindling for my wood stove. Let me cut a new piece here, a new blank, and I'll get this drilled in the proper position. Um, this one's not even close. It's right on the length, but it's not right on the angle because somebody had the wrong alignment here. This piece should have been turned like this. The hole should have been drilled this way, not this way. So let me get that redone and then we'll carry on with that dashboard. And there we go, that one's correct now. Guys, if you should drill it wrong, don't get upset about it. Don't worry about it. We all make mistakes. Truth be told, I actually cut six blanks before I got it right. Um, one of them was the wrong dimension because the plans had a wrong dimension on it. I think that was this one. Uh, one of them has a flaw. I tried to cut it out of scrap and I didn't like the flaws, so I got rid of it. Another one had flaws. I didn't like it. And then I drilled the one incorrectly with you guys, and then I corrected my mistake and drilled the second one incorrectly. So no big deal. I've got some more kindling for the fire. And we have one here. Oh, by the way, guys, if you have a wood stove in your shop, um, you never, ever make mistakes when it comes to your woodworking. At least there's no evidence of it. So we've got this piece here now with the properly sized and angled hole. And we now want to cut this rabbit right here. We're gonna do this over at the table saw. It's just a simple straight rip cut. We're gonna raise our blade to one quarter inch to cut this little shoulder here. And then we're gonna raise the blade up this dimension right here, which would be five eighths of an inch. And we'll cut that shoulder. That will get that one piece right out of there. Okay, and there is our rabbit to form this section of the dashboard and we have our marking template. So for this, it's just a matter of lining it up on the top of our dashboard. This would be lining it up on the 7 eighths of an inch side. And once we get it lined up, we're gonna trace our marking template. Now, first things first, guys, we're gonna take this over to the belt sander and we're going to sand off these angles here at the top. After that, we're just heading to the scroll saw and we're gonna put in a brand new number seven reverse tooth PGT blade into the saw, check it for square, and we are going to cut along these lines in order to get our dashboard's final shape. And the last thing that we want to add to this is this one little tiny chamfer right up here. And guys, that is nothing more than a little bit of hand sanding here with a shop made sanding block. So we're just gonna gently drag this back and forth. It doesn't have to be a huge chamfer, just a little one. So we're gonna hand sand this in place and then we're gonna do a dry fit with our dashboard. There we go. And a piece that looks relatively difficult on the plans is actually fairly easy uh, once you get the hole drilled in the right orientation. All right, so let's move on to the seats for the cab of this truck. Well, the first pieces that we want to make will be the seat mounts. We need two of them, one inch by one inch by seven eighths of an inch. Guys, these are very simply cut over at the table saw um, using push blocks to get the one by one and then cutting them to length at seven eighths using our small parts cutting jig. As for the seats here to make two and the seat backs, 
Um, we're just going to rip some stock one and a quarter inches wide. Now, guys, we see here this 80 degree angle. And while they're not wrong, it is not necessarily measured from the plane that we would cut. We would actually cut from this plane. So we need to take a 90 degree angle, which would be zero in our case, and subtract this 80. That will give us 10 degrees. And that's what we will set our miter fence at in order to get the 10 degree angles here on our seat bottoms. Now, even though it doesn't say it, if we look at the assembly drawing over here, we can see how these go together. So if one of them is cut at 10 degrees, that means that the other one has to be cut at 10 degrees as well in order to make them mesh like this, the way that we need them to mesh to assemble these seats. However, there is a missing measurement. While the seat is listed at one and a quarter by one and one eighth, again, table saw cuts using either the small parts cutting jig uh, or longer pieces and your miter fence, the actual length of the seat back is not listed, um, but I've measured it scaled off the drawing and that is one and three quarters. I've said it so many times here on this build, guys. These are your prints, mark them up. These corrections may have been made on other versions of the print, but if they're not on your print, put them on your print. Uh, there's no sense in complaining about it. It's a one-to-one -one drawing. You can just scale off the drawing. So. We're going to make a marking template here. I'm kind of getting tired of sounding like a broken record where I'm showing you how to rip pieces on the table saw. This should be second nature by this point in time now that we're on part 11. So we have these pieces here. They will get glued together like this for the seats. We're going to make a marking template of the seat back. We're going to trace it out on both of our backs and sand them to shape and then we're going to do some shaping, but guys, I, I've never been a fan of this kind of a seat. Very plain, very unrealistic, very, very boring. So we're actually going to, I'm going to get my power carver. I'm not going to do a video on it because what I do in this case, I mean, that doesn't mean that you guys are going to do it, but I'm going to sand these seats to make them look just a little more realistic as if they were leather and the leather is worn. Um, and we're going to get them done and I'll show you what I end up with at the end of all of this. Okay, so I'm almost done the one chair. You can see the difference between the shaping and the not shaping. So it's up to you what you want to do on the plans. It does call for a, a round over all the way around. Uh, it's still a little flat for my liking. So shape the chairs the way that you want. We're going to glue them onto their pedestals and then we can dry fit them in the cab. Well, at this point, we're going to move on to one of my most hated pieces to make, and that would be the steering wheel. Guys, you can find the steering wheel on sheet nine of nine, the general views page right here. It is an inch and a quarter in diameter. So what I have here is I have a scrap of walnut. It's a half an inch thick, and I have cut it, the circle here, just over at the scroll saw, a little larger than an inch and a quarter, and I have drilled a quarter inch diameter hole right in the middle. Step number one, guys, is we're gonna take this over to the lathe, and I am going to turn this to round, and then down to its final dimension of one and a quarter inches. Well, the steering wheel is a quarter of an inch thick, so what we're going to do is on one side here, we're going to place, well, it'll be a mark in the middle because this is a half inch thick piece of stock. So we're just going to place a mark here at quarter inch and we can transfer that all the way around our blank. Okay, and that will be the thickness of our steering wheel. However, if we look at the drawing here, we can see that there is a hub right here on the back of the steering wheel. And that's the part that we're going to turn next. So I've changed up my bushings and put some smaller diameter ones here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parting tool. We're a little high on that tool rest. We're going to use a parting tool to take this back section down here to a diameter of 7 sixteenths of an inch, which is the diameter of that hub shown on the drawing. All right, and there is the basis or the beginning of our steering wheel. 
Now, what we want to do at this point is I want to round off these edges and then we can move on from there. Now, the depth of our steering wheel from the edge here in the actual wheel that you grip is 3 16 of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this speed way down and I'm going to place a mark 3 16 of an inch roughly in from the edge. So with that mark done, we're going to do a little bit of shaping on the outside of our steering wheel. So we're just going to be very gentle about this. And I just want to get in here and kind of give it a little bit of a concave shaping. Not a lot, just a little. All right, and with that done, we can head over to the bench. So on the back of our wheel, we need to kind of have a little bit of artistry here. And if we look on the print here, see how they kind of have this, it almost looks like a Batman symbol. Well, I don't really want to do that with my wheel. So what I'm going to do is from this center hub here, I'm just going to draw out two straight lines right out to our outside hub and try to make them symmetrical. Let's just have a look at that there. That's not too, too bad. And then perpendicular to those, we're going to bring this down so that we get another line here like this. Now that's a little crooked. Now I don't know if you can see this or not, but essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to straighten this up so it looks a little better. And once I get it sketched out the way I like, I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw, drill a blade entry hole in each one of these sections here, and I'm going to carefully, very carefully, cut those out. Once you get those cut, I'll show you what to do next. And that's about it right there. Now, it's not perfect, but there's only one way to finish this steering wheel off and we have to round the inside of the steering wheel columns and straighten out these uh, supports on the sides and that's all hand filing and hand sanding guys so sit back put on some music and file this and get it shaped to the way you want once you get that done we're not finished we need to do a little more to this Okay, so once you're done with your shaping, I have a quarter inch diameter dowel. It's just a piece of scrap. I have rounded off the top of the dowel and I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue here and we're going to glue it in place in our center hub there, that quarter inch hole that we drilled. So we're going to install it in such a way so that it protrudes ever so slightly out the front of our steering wheel. And that will represent uh, the horn or the center hub. Now, once you get your squeeze out cleaned up, if you want, you can shave this down to 3 16 of an inch so that it's going to fit in our dashboard. Um, or you can cut this flush and drill, once this is dry, a 3 16 stopped hole into the hub and use that to install it in your dashboard. Um, I think at first I'm going to try to shave that down and see how we make out. If I like the way it looks, I'll keep it. If not, I'll drill it out. And once you get your steering wheel done and you've cut the shaft to length, you can glue it in place here on your dashboard. Now I'm slowly getting my cab glued together step by step. Uh, I don't like gluing this all at one time, guys. There's too much of a chance for this to shift or change. Um, so you never really know what's gonna happen. You're better off to just do it one step at a time and get it done that way. So I'm gonna finish gluing up this cab and then we're gonna turn our attention to the roof of the cab. Following the dimensions on the prints, I've just cut a blank of quarter inch thick stock and I've made a template using a photocopy of the pattern in the prints. We're just going to trace this out guys to get that front profile. The rest of it is a square cut. We're going to take it over to the belt sander. We will do the final shaping of it over there. 
And when it's all said and done, you end up with something that looks like this. Now, guys, there is a bit of a contour here. If we look on the prints, we can see it here in the front. It's on the front and the sides, not at the back. All this is, for me anyway, I've placed a 1 8 round over here using a starter pin and my router table. And that is my basis for the shaping. From there, it was all hand sanding. And when you get it done, uh, you can glue it on here, flush with the back and flush with the sides. And there you go. You end up with something that looks like this. And that would be our cab pretty much complete. We still have our upright piece here, our support for the windshield. I may wait on that for now. Um, but for now, we're going to get the roof glued on and we can move on with some other parts. Well, guys, I'm going to sidetrack for just a little bit here. Um, I've said before that the best way to sand the majority of these pieces is with some 180 grit sandpaper or whatever grit you want to use glued down to a three quarter inch thick piece of MDF. But there comes a time when the sandpaper gets worn out. It, you need to replace it. So how do we go about that? Um, you can try to peel this off. It's quite difficult. So get yourself a heat gun. And let me show you how this works here. We'll get this dust out of here. We're gonna turn the heat gun on high and start heating up one corner and the edges. And once the glue starts getting hot, you'll see, I'm just holding this with two fingers. Once the glue starts heating up underneath, this sandpaper will peel right off. All right, so there we go. There is the old piece off. Now, guys, this is garbage. Just get rid of it. What we're going to do now is I'm going to give this a wipe down with some mineral spirits just to clean it up and get rid of some of this uh, residue or the sawdust that was still on there. And then all I'm going to do is spray a piece of 180 grit sandpaper and glue it right back down. You don't have to wait the three minutes if you don't want to. Um, it's not necessary. It can help when it comes to removing it, but it's up to you. So let's get a fresh sheet glued on here and then we can carry on. Just a little extra tidbit of information, guys. And unfortunately, we have run out of time again on this week's show. Guys, this build is just crawling along. And one of the main things that's causing it to crawl along is the repetitive nature of uh, this is an easy piece. It's square, do a rip cut and a cross cut on your table saw. And then, of course, I demonstrate it at this point in the game at this point in the build if you haven't figured out that a square piece is done with rip cuts and cross cuts at the table saw maybe this isn't the build for you so moving forward and trying to pick up a little more pace with this build um, because we do have some more complicated pieces that we need to uh, construct I don't want to waste a lot of time and get into the repetitious nature of showing the exact same thing over and over again. And I know I said I was going to show every single piece, but man, how many rip cut cuts and cross cuts can you do, guys? I mean, they're simple cuts. You guys have got this. I know you've got this. You don't need me to show you the simple squares of wood. So what I'm going to do is move the build forward a little bit and uh, try to pick up the pace by getting into the more complicated pieces. And then we're going to move forward by doing that. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an amazing audience base here on the show, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that community. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're still enjoying the build because it's still got a lot to go. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.